Hey guys, my name is Paige and I'm a senior physics major here at Murray Bain College. So today I'm going to be doing a demonstration with the pendulum wave. Um, so what we have here is we have balls on a string um, and each are at different lengths. So we have the shortest length down to the longest length um, down here, if you can see that. Um, so what I'm going to be demonstrating um, is speed of each of these. So I'm going to turn it this way so you guys can see a little bit better. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be hold it, holding a ruler to these balls and then letting them go at the same time and we can view the speed of each of the balls. So as we can see, even though I let them go at the same time, the ones with the shorter string are actually traveling faster than the ones on the longer, with the longer string. Isn't that pretty cool? Hey guys, my name is Peyton. I'm a member of the Society of Physics Students and I'm here to teach you guys about angular momentum. So angular momentum comes from spinning. And my favorite way of demonstrating this is with this bike tire here. As you can see, it's a standard bicycle tire and it's attached to these two rods so I can keep a good hold of it. Now what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna get this spinning and spinning. Now all this momentum, all this energy needs somewhere to go. And normally it would just come out through the spinning. But as you can see, I'm having a hard time keeping a hold of this. All this energy, all this momentum needs somewhere to go. I'm gonna get that stopped real quick. Now I can actually take all this energy and all this momentum and I can make myself spin with it. So behind me here, I have this nice little rotating table. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this spike tire spinning as fast as I can. Faster, 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 faster. I want to get this going as fast as I can, get as much energy, as much momentum as possible. Get up on my little table, and woo! All this energy is now transferring to me, because it needs somewhere it can go. All of that movement from one bike tire and a little bit of energy. Hi guys, my name is Lauren. I'm a senior at Moravian College. I'm the president of the Society of Physics Students. Um, and I'm gonna be doing something with this glass of water today. So as you would expect, if I turn this glass of water upside down, what's gonna happen? This is gonna, all the water is gonna fall out into this tub, right? Same thing with this. If I let go of this right now, going to fall down, right? And this is all due to gravity, which we all know keeps us down on Earth, everything like that. doesn't matter where I place these things, they should fall down until they hit a surface, right? So what happens when I hold this cardboard against this glass and I flip it upside down? You'd expect the cardboard to fall down as well as the water inside the glass to fall into the tub. However, it doesn't do that. It's gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna show you what happens now. So, I'm gonna hold the cardboard tight to the top of the cup, flat on it, and then turn it upside down. So what happens is the gravity is forcing the water down out of the glass. Some of it's leaking out. I wish I could show you, but just trust me on that. I don't wanna move outside this tub, just in case something goes wrong. So, what happens when I let go of the cardboard? You expect it to fall. It doesn't. It's gonna stay there. Now, what happens is, if you see, some of that water that just dripped out is water that dripped out the bottom of the cup onto the cardboard. When that happens, some of the water inside the cup leaks out and that space fills with air. So the pressure inside the pressure of the air inside the cup is actually going to decrease. 
and the pressure of air around me and at the bottom of the cup here is greater than the pressure inside the cup. That pressure difference keeps this cardboard pressed against the bottom of the glass and then that water doesn't escape because it creates a really good seal around the edge. And then it stays and the water doesn't fall out and then you move it and all the water falls out because the seal breaks and that pressure pushes that water out of the glass. You can do this at home really easy. Just make sure you cut your cardboard to the size of the top of your cup. Fill the cup. Um, I, I start tiny and then you can build your way up. Start it tiny um, so that way you get a handle of what you're doing. Flip that upside down. Make sure you have a, a tight fit of the cup underneath. Um, and then just turn it upside down. Make sure you have a tub to catch the water so you don't make a mess. But really easy to do at home and it's super fun and super cool. Thanks guys. Hi, I'm Dan. I'm a physics major here at Moravian College. Today I'm going to be showing you the Van der Graaff machine. So pretty much what this does is it strips electrons off of a rubber band and puts them onto a metal sphere. If you've ever shuffled across a carpet and built up like static electricity on your hands, it's kind of like that. It puts it on the sphere here. This sphere right here is grounded, so it has no electric charge on it. What's going to happen when I turn this machine on is that it's going to become so charged, the first sphere, that electricity is going to move through the air onto the second sphere. See? You see that building up and arcing every once in a while? There's one camera. And I'll ground it. So that was the Van der Graaff machine. Hi, my name is Edward Rader, and I teach physics at Moravian College. And what I want to show you today is this Van der Graaff generator that Dan has talked about. And what we have is between these two spheres, and remember this one gets charged, and that one is grounded, that one is neutral, we have a metal ball hanging by a thread. And it would be interesting to see what would happen to the ball if I turn this on and I charge up this sphere. Let's see what, what we can do. I think that's very hypnotic. I like it. Hi guys, I'm Lauren. I'm Jack. I'm just going to show you my third experiment with the Van Graaff machine. So this one just has to do with this one. Like we said earlier, it gets charged up and we're going to see what happens to the packing peanuts that are in this cup when I turn it off. Oh, I did well. Okay, yeah, it is. That was it. <laughs> that works well. 